The Great Battle of Lepanto. A history of union that formed the Holy League. More than 400 years ago, it's none other than the Great Battle of Lepanto, one of the most important wars for Christianity, which made its power known to a religion that at that time was pagan in its territory and was known as Islam. It was so great that only the First World War could be compared to it. This crushing victory of Christianity completely stopped the expansionism that the Arabs had in the Mediterranean Sea and condemned their fleet to be almost completely destroyed. It begins with the growing threat of the Ottoman Empire to control the Western Mediterranean Sea, with its constant skirmishes and taking towns and cities, which belong to the Spanish crown, Italy and the rest of Europe, among others. Tensions were already very evident on the Italian and Spanish coasts, which expected an imminent attack by the Arabs. By the year 1570, the Ottomans attacked the island of Cyprus, which at that time was under Venetian rule. This aggression by the Turks was the trigger for the Venetians to start thinking about allying with Spain to defeat them. And it wasn't until 1571 with the incursion of the Arabs to Famagusta and their cruel massacre of all the inhabitants, that they took the fervent decision to make an alliance with Spain. If it had not been for the serious threat, such an alliance would not have happened. The Mighty Holy League. It is at that time that Spain, the Papal States and the Great Venice have a great audience to decide which way to go with the growing threat and danger of attack by the Ottomans. That is when they took the brilliant idea to join forces and create the so-called Holy League. This league had the objective of stopping once and for all the Muslim advances by sea and greatly reducing the attack of the Corsairs. Other key points of this league and proposed by Pope St. Pius V was to combat Protestantism in the region and the spread of Islam as a false religion. The Great Fleet assembles. The port of Messina is the one that was chosen in the hearing of the Christian League to be the meeting point for all the ships of the coalition, to then set sail as soon as possible to the combat against the Ottoman ships that were already preparing for battle. Most of the ships used for this type of armed conflict were galleys, which due to their lightness and easy manoeuvrability were propelled by oars, apart from having sails to take advantage of the winds when necessary. The first squadron to arrive was that of the Venetians, who brought 136 galleys and 26 smaller ships, among them galleys where the commanders were ready for this battle. The pontifical forces gathered a total of 12 galleys, and their greatest contribution was to finance part of the battle with their coffers. And the Spanish Empire, with its King Philip II, contributed with 50 ships, all of them galleys. On the part of the Ottomans, their commanding general, Ali Pasha, had 208 galleys, 66 galleys, and 100 auxiliary units. Infantry. Best strategy and decisive factor. The main commander of this navy was John of Austria, and had about 85,000 men, who were divided into 36,000 infantrymen, 13,000 sailors, and 44,000 rowers, who were mostly slaves and galley slaves, which were armed in the heat of the battle to pay off their debt and be free. The slaves were chained to their oars and sank with the ship. On the part of the Ottoman navy, the men who were ready for battle were fewer. Their numbers were around 25,000 soldiers, and they had a big problem, because the other crew members were Christian slaves, and they could not free them to help them fight. For this detail, the Holy League has a clear advantage over the Turks, and decisive in the final outcome of the battle. Clash of religious powers, war chants are heard. Everything began on October 7th, 1571, a little after 8 o'clock in the morning. 
when both squadrons are clearly seen on the part of the Holy League are deployed to their positions, each ship having the wind against them and having to row, which delays them a lot. Also let the banners and flags that identify them and the soldiers hear the sounds of trumpets that motivate them for combat. On the part of the Ottomans with clear advantage because they sailed from the port where they were docked with favourable winds, they deployed very quickly and very optimistic for the battle. Both formations are practically equal for this contest. We are almost entering midday and all the ships in their positions are ready for the battle that is getting closer and closer. The wind has changed course and no longer benefits the Turks, which the Christians see as a divine sign. The ships are approaching little by little with the tide advancing in a parallel manner that gives them no room to manoeuvre or retreat. A formation of six galleasses go to the front. This type of ship is taller than the others, much larger and very heavy and slow, which due to their number of cannons on board, their task will be to try to break the enemy formation and do as much damage as they can. The Christian galleasses get closer and closer and the Ottomans start firing without much luck to hit the shots. This is taken advantage of by the Christians, who do a lot of damage to the enemy ships, which raise the decks of the nearest ships and watch them sink. The Ottomans let them pass so as not to suffer more damage and thus wait for the bulk of the Christian League's armada and thus unleash the hell of boarding and hand-to-hand -hand fighting. A result that breaks the oppressive yoke of the Turks. The Christians, who were led by John of Austria, were victorious, of which only 30 Ottoman galleys were saved from sinking. At that moment, the expansionism of the Turks in the Eastern Mediterranean, for several decades, was almost completely stopped and forced the Allied Corsairs to abandon any attack. Its importance in Europe was enormous, because in this period it was marked by its own internal wars of religion and the Protestant Reformation. Pope Pius V created a new feast called Our Lady of Victory, and King Philip II used the victory to establish himself as a Catholic king and defender of the Christian religion against Islam. At the same time, Lepanto was much more than a military victory. It could be said that it was a moral victory, which ended decades of terror produced by the constant battles with the Ottomans and the victories of Suleiman the Magnificent over the continent. While the Battle of Lepanto was a clear victory for the Christian side, it did not mean a definitive defeat for the Ottoman Empire. What would have happened if the Ottomans had won that battle? Would today's Europe be different? I'll read your comments. Don't close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us grow and keep making a lot more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.